In this video, we'll use the present worth method of analysis to evaluate mutually exclusive alternatives. Take a moment, pause the video, read the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. So this is a reasonably straightforward problem. Um, the technique that we'll use here, called the present worth method of analysis, uh, is really about taking the cash flows that occur in the future, bringing them back to the present, uh, so that they can be compared to other alternatives for which we've done the same method of moving the payments. So remember in engineering economics, we can only compare dollar amounts that occur at the same point in time. And in this procedure, we will make these comparisons at time t equal to zero. So in the problem, we learn about this company that's considering four possible investments. And all of these investments are mutually exclusive, meaning if we do one, that means we are not doing any of the other ones. The potential investment amount for the four possible alternatives, um, we tend to call a first cost. And the first cost may be the purchase price of the equipment, but it will also include things like installation, sometimes transportation. Many things are involved in that first cost, but this is the amount of money we have to invest at the beginning of each of these potential different projects uh, to get that project going. Then each of the projects, um, in this case it's a piece of equipment, um, we project that that investment in the project, that first cost, will then produce an annual savings. So every year, each of these investments will produce an annual savings of a certain amount. Now if we look at, just for instance, if we look at alternative number one, we could purchase this equipment uh, and if I look at it on a cash flow diagram, that would mean we have a down arrow, a cost, or in other words, this is a negative amount that occurs at time t equal to zero. We then have a benefit, so an annual savings is a benefit to us, so then we have up arrows. And for this particular problem, we learn that the time frame is 10 years, so in this case our n is going to be equal to 10. And just to illustrate what this means for 10 years is that we have the initial investment plus 10 up arrows of $25,000. Now we could undertake this investment. Seems like it's probably a good idea. Um, but how do we tell if this investment is better than investment number two or investment number three? Just by looking at the numbers we really can't tell which investment is better because underlying all of this calculation is an interest rate. Right? So if we think about there's, a, there's an interest rate, and in fact we learn that this company uses a MAR equal to 15%. So this is the minimum attractive rate of return for this company to invest in projects. If we do the time value of money calculations using the MAR as the interest rate, if we receive, if we calculate a positive present value, that means that the project uh, earns a rate of return higher than the MAR. I'll repeat that again at the end um, just to emphasize that point. So I, I won't draw this cash flow diagram for each of the alternatives. So for alternative one, the cash flow diagram would look like this, where the positive annuity is $25,000 for 10 years, and the initial investment is uh, for $10,000. So very simply, I can write the present worth of alternative one as being equal to negative 100,000, because remember, remember this is a down arrow, an investment, is negative plus a benefit of $25,000 times the P given A factor because what I'm doing is I'm taking an A, an annuity, and bringing it back to the present. So I use the P given A factor and in this case I'll do it for 
15% and 10 years. So the compound interest factor that I'll use, I can find this in an interest table um, at the back of my textbook. And I can work out what this is. It's 25,000 times the P given A factor in the 15% interest table for N equal to 10. I maybe should have written that in there, um, is 5.0187. And if we proceed with the calculations of this, we end up with a present worth for project one of 25,468. So like I said, I was going to repeat, if I end up with a positive present worth for an investment using the MAR as an interest rate, a positive number here means that this project earns at least 15%. Think of it this way. Cash flows that occur in the future get smaller when we bring them back at time, in time, and they get smaller more drastically the higher the interest rate is. So I could keep increasing this number, this MAR, until I get to you know, 18, 20%. At some value of the MAR, this investment turns negative. That means it's not attractive anymore. That means it doesn't earn at least the value uh, that is the minimum attractive rate of return for the company. That's, I think, the best way to think about uh, how this present worth method of analysis works and how to interpret the MAR. Later on in the course, we'll learn the value of the interest rate that actually makes the present worth exactly equal to zero, and we'll call that something else called the IRR, or the internal rate of return for the project. I can do exactly the same calculation for each of the other alternatives. So uh, instead of 100,000 and 25,000, I could do 150 and 34, 246, et cetera. The time value money factor would actually be the same. So I won't bother doing all of them, but I'll just write down what the answers are. So the present worth of each of these other projects, if I do the same calculation, end up at 20,636 for project two, for project three, for alternative three, end up with 30,860 and 21,029 for alternative four. So here is the present worth of each of these alternatives. After I've done this, I can compare these numbers and it should make sense that the highest number the alternative that produces the highest present value should be the one that I choose. So in this instance, we would say select option three based on the present worth method of analysis.